Last but not least, we are going to look at the textures playback option, which states granular playback preserving sample pitch. And really the difference between cycles and textures is that cycles kind of pre-split up that audio signal coming in for you. You didn't really set that. With textures and granular, you can actually set the grain size, okay? And that's gonna have some drastic impacts on the sound. But essentially, it is gonna be trying to do the same thing in that your playback speed um, is not gonna impact pitch. And so you can play chords and everything should be playing back at the same speed. You're just gonna hear a very different type of artifact um, in this mode as you heard in the cycles mode. And this is especially true the further you get away from the root key. So for example, with grain size, if we play something a little bit higher up, like one octave higher, it's a really cool sound. And when the grain size is that big, you know, it's taking much larger chunks. So it's not really breaking it up even to that many parts. It's 300 milliseconds, um, which is actually very, very large for a grain size. That's almost like uh, no longer a grain, but, you know, whatever's bigger than a grain. I don't know what's bigger than a grain of rice, but, you know, larger, large rice. <laughs> We also have our speed control, just like we had before. And this is much more of your traditional like travelizer sound, if anybody remembers that reactor instrument. Um, that's really what this is. This is kind of like a wave scanner, okay? It's just different ways of scanning your waveform, different ways of it breaking it up. This time it's doing it into grains. So uh, let's play something a little lower this time. Let's go an octave down. And even just doing stuff like this is actually a cool effect and a cool thing to sometimes bring in and like a transition. And uh, when you're a listener, you just have no freaking idea like what's made that sound. And I think that's what makes this mode so cool. <laughs> And the other option we have is the playhead motion. So really what that's gonna do is like when you are triggering it, it's gonna bounce around a little bit. So let's see if we can get this to, so you can hear it easily. Let's bring the speed back to normal. I might bring it down a little bit. So you can hear how with motion, as it's playing back, it's essentially jumping around. And this is more interesting if you have really small grain sizes and the speed is going really slow. So let's... Okay. This is what I kind of imagine working at it with. And now we're going to bring the speed way down. And that's a lot of times what I kind of associate granular with is this sound. Now we're really just like getting those tones. Let's go up an octave. We're going really drastically up high, but you're gonna hear it still trying to key track it. And always remember, you can jump around with these things and that's gonna make it even more rich and more uh, textured. Now, what I like to do is I actually like to put this into freeze mode and you're gonna see why in a second. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna just move this position knob over just so we can see what's happening. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna increase the voice stacking all the way up to five voices. Okay, so right now it's just gonna make it a lot louder. Let's bring these back to their defaults. Even that's kind of cool. What an awesome sound. But what's really neat is that I can take that voice stack spread and I can move the position around. And we're gonna see, or hopefully we'll see that when I click play next time, 
you can now see those guys like so. We can spread them really far, keep them a little closer. I like to keep them a little closer. You can even do something like this, modulating it. But this is kind of cool for me. And now you can do stuff like this. So you can be jumping that around while playing different keys on the keyboard. It's awesome. And then when we add in our motion and stuff, let's go up an octave now. What a cool sound. Especially if we were moving our play position. We could spread out more if we want to. What an awesome, awesome sound. And soon we're gonna get the true grain cloud effect. So a really interesting texture, especially if we add just like a tiny bit of an LFO to all these things. Okay, it doesn't have to be, again, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Sometimes I think people think that it needs to be. I'm just gonna do a little bit of this. And let's listen to how it sounds. really high octaves. Really, really cool, really low octaves. It's amazing what you can do with this mode if you know how to handle it, if you know what to expect with it. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's now bring this back. Let's try to make it a little less crazy. Whoa, that was, what a sound. And just imagine everything that's possible if you were to modulate a lot more things, you could basically just have um, an audio track recording you fiddling around with stuff and you'd have plenty to work with for risers, for fallers, for other effects to work into your track. So there's always practical applications to these things. I know that for me, whenever I teach Bitwig Studio or I make these videos, I get lost in just the experimental side of it, just like the sound for sound's sake. But remember, with a keen ear, you can take everything that you've learned, everything that you've seen um, throughout these videos and find practical uses for them. There's a lot of practical uses for all three of these different modes um, and also just some fun sound sculpting as well. So if you've watched all the videos, I hope you've learned something new. And yeah, just keep creating, keep experimenting. That's what Bitwig is all about. Out, and that's what it does uh, phenomenally well. Thanks a lot and take care.